Hi guys, Bruce here. Well look what we got here. The old favorite, eh? Classic Briggs and Stratton Murray this time. And I think the Murrays are still built better than the MTDs. Uh, the one, the one small thing I struggle with on the Murrays <laughs> is this little Rubik's Cube right here, eh? How many of you, oh this one's got a different this one's got a different uh, Z band in here instead of the T. Usually the T sticks through there. But it seems to work. So anyway, the, the, lady, the lady who brought this in, uh, her name is Linda. Uh, she's got the front... I know. She's got the front higher than the back. Which is actually, in my mind, a little bit opposite of what it should be. So I'm going to keep it at this height. I'm going to lower the front and raise the back. Just so that the front of the blade hits the grass first. It's not crucial, right? You cut long. So I'm going to try and start it. It does squirt when you, when you hit the uh, primer. You guys know what I'm doing here, right? Squirt, squirt, squirt. Help me start. It didn't yesterday. It wants to though, I think. Oh yeah. And I got my dance hall specials on. So I'm just going to take off the air filter. That's always the first thing. Oh, I guess I should check the oil too, right? It's got a exactly the right amount of oil. So this little mower has actually been maintained. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I don't do this. Some people do. They soak their air filters in oil, and then they put them on. I ran a machine, just like this one, but it was a Tecumseh, same size, 3.5 horsepower. 27 years on my double lot, and I sold it running, and I did not soak the filter in oil. Now let's see if it starts. Wouldn't be the first time a clogged air filter stops a lawnmower from running, right? Let's just see. I got a hunch if it catches it's going to run. Oh, hello there, Mrs. Pender. Hey, it's running pretty good if it starts one more time. Oh, this fell off. Let's get you back on the on the saddle here. I have you on the left side of the screen just so you can see everything that's going on, right? Now it's warmed up, right? So, one more little job and we'll look at the we'll look at the spark plug. It's going to be hot. And I gotta, if I'm going to continue on this, I have to go get some work clothes on.
Although these are just my slumming clothes. Inch KB2LM, that's good. Okay, it's pretty clogged up. You see that? And I think that's because the air filter was acting like a choke. So, it's pretty dirty, isn't it? It's ugly dirty, not pretty dirty. I might use the pressure washer on it before I uh, water my lawn. I'll be right back. Okay, look at that. I think that's a brand new plug, actually. There's not that many hours on it. So I think that dirty air filter has choked up the engine. Or it's an oil burner. We don't know. I'll just be polite and go to the other side. Don't move the camera, move your body. Good. Good, nice click there. Okay, uh, we're gonna power wash this bad boy. So come with me over here. Be right back. All right, let's start the pressure washer and just do a quick wash of this one. Doesn't have to be a soaker on this one. It's not that dirty. It's just icky poo poo. Come on in guys, clean more. I'm just going to take a little air and blow it off. You think it'll start? I don't know, man. Okay, we're going to squirt it. Wet, eh? That should do it. Alright, my friends, it's been running long enough to change the oil. That'll be the first thing we do. <clears throat> Actually, the next thing we're going to do is one small experiment. I want to know if the uh, carburetor is loose or not.
what I just did there was I took some carb spray, any hydrocarbon will work, right? And I sprayed it around the base of the carburetor, and if there was anything loose at all, the carburetor spray would get sucked underneath that join right there, and it would sputter, it would change RPMs or something, right? So that's just an insurance policy for me. Now next I'm going to change the height. It's just over a knuckle height. So I'm going to lower these. And I'm going to raise. No, I'm not even going to raise that. I think that, well, I'm going to raise it a little tiny. <clears throat> these are all, this is an easy, this is a nice old one more actually. Okay, we are at four. Good. Well, she cuts it long. Let's see if she likes that. So what's next? Oil change. I'm going to let it run a tiny bit more, even though it's in the air. I don't like to do this, but... Okay, it's idling at 31.20 now. I turned it down just a tad. And when you've got these open, you can, uh, that is the lever that puts more or less tension on the wind vane governor. So now we're going to change the oil. We've leveled the lawnmower, and I think the bung is on this side. It'll be a 3 8 inch. Okay, you guys there watching? Good. Well, now let's get that oil out of there. Let's just have another peekaboo here. Yeah, it's on this side. So if you're looking, I'll tilt it up all the way, just bring it over this way a little bit, and right there is the bump. Oh, it's not even in that hard. Okay. I'll take that, I'll put that down there. I bumped you, sorry. And we're just going to put that there. And then I always have a quick little shot glance underneath. What's coming out? Sounds like it's spilling, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to take the bung out here. I don't know if you guys need to see me watch this or not. This is just a lawnmower tune-up. But tune-ups are important. And for the average guy, if he does one of these every year, he's not going to need a higher priced repair than just an oil change, truck plug check, air filter, and a blade sharpen, right? Now I think I have one, whoop, I think I have one of these that's dry. So if I just clean this one, I can replace it. I'm going to grab a, a new air filter, a new old air filter. <laughs> we have a new one, look at that, and it has the same pattern in the filter as the old one. So that's pretty cool.
Good. All right, now we're going to put the bung back in the lawnmower. Oil bung. And then at the same time, we'll pull the blade off. All the while, we have to remember there's no oil in this machine right now, right? Is right there. Can you guys see that? I think you can. Good. And that looks like a nine sixteenths for the blade. I'm not even going to check the blade because I know it's going to need sharpening. Can you see that, what I'm doing there? Oh, kind of. Okay. You know what, for an old blade, this machine was well maintained. Not bad. I'm just going to do a quick, quick sharpen right inside the garage here. I'll be right back. I'm going to use my bench grinder. Everybody has a different way of doing this. It's like welding, right? When you weld something, then 27 guys jump on there and tell you how to weld. All right. So what I do... This side's done already, it's very nice. Uh, I run the blade back and forth across the stone, and when the sparks start to come, whoops, when the sparks start to come over the blade, you know you're getting close. I don't know if we can show you that or not. Eddie, yeah, Eddie, yeah, we'll just point that a little bit off to the side. Well, maybe we'll just. Now you guys can get right in here, and you're watching right there. Now get it started. It's about right. No sparks coming across there yet. bit too sharp because you want this blade to be a bit dull on the edges so that uh, so, so that when the, if you hit anything rough it won't put a nick in the blade so I just do this that's all I do that's just so small right? that's perfect Now, one more thing. Balancing a blade. This is in the Briggs book. The old Briggs book. If it, now, if it was heavy on one side, it'll go this way or that way. And if it's, if it's balanced, you can stick it anywhere and it'll stay. Ah, see? It's just a little bit heavier that way. I'll straighten it. Oh, that's good. We'll turn it over just to make sure. Oh, uh, that's pretty good. I tell you, this this was this machine was made in 1998, and uh, it's 24 years old. So, do you think that the lawnmower? This is a basic lawnmower, right? It has a rear bag. 
But do you think that this a lawnmower bought today at a big box store will be around in, uh, let me see, 22, 32, 42, 19, 20, 48? Do you think that uh, equivalent lawnmower will be around in the year 2050, for example, or 2048? I don't think so. <clears throat> now these ones have to be tightened up quite a bit because it's just a flange holding it together, right? Now I watch the numbers on the, on the socket to see if they move. That's it. Now I'm going to just take my big socket wrench. Ratchet wrench. <laughs> and give it a little reef. Yep, yeah, that's good. That's a hell of a little foot pile. Okay guys, we're going to just put oil in this. Let's just clean up our little mess. These hold 500 milliliters. And that's exactly what I drained out. Isn't that cool? So bungs in, blade sharp. Filters clean. Plugs clean. Lawnmowers clean. Hi guys. Okay, it's clean spark plug, new oil, air filter. All right, everybody gets a half a tank of fuel. Five, six gorps is about a half a tank of fuel for a classic. Okay, let's give it a go. We can get the gas cap on. There we go. Okay, three squirts, because it's upside down, upside down, around, sideways. Four squirts. Oh, it feels good. Let's just see if we can do this. Got it. On a 25-year-old lawnmower, I could go in there and make a whole bunch of changes and it wouldn't run any better than it is right now. It runs good. Let's just see if it runs starts when it's hot. We're done, baby. Alright, my friends, it's the next day. And I'm just going to take this back to the owner. She just lives, oh, about a mile away, I guess. Four or five squirts. We'll see if it starts, and we'll put a clamp on it. Let it warm up a little bit.